The date is February 11, 2016, and this is the date when there was a very big announcement from the astrophysicist and also astronomical community. And here we're talking about the discovery of two black holes colliding and creating what is called a gravitational wave. Now, it may not sound very important, it may not sound like something you may want to care about, but it actually is a lot more important than you can think of. As a matter of fact, it is a 100% uh, chance that these people who discovered this will be getting a Nobel Prize this year. And it's also very, very likely to actually redefine our understanding of the world. <laughs> Now, I'm actually in Space Engine right now, and I have found um, a black hole very close to our planet, and this is actually the effect that Space Engine creates when you approach a black hole. And uh, today I wanted to actually kind of explain to you what, what exactly has been found by the researchers, and also give you a better visual understanding of uh, what it means and how it may affect our future understanding of the world, and of course, how it may actually change our understanding of physics, astronomy, and so on and so forth. So. First and foremost, let's actually briefly talk about who those people are and who actually is responsible for this big discovery. And as I'm trying to escape the black hole, I think I'm actually stuck here. Maybe not. There we go. We're escaping the black hole and flying into outer space. And uh, so the, 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 the actual team is called LIGO. Uh, this is short for Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, which is basically responsible for finding these so-called gravitational waves, which were a prediction of Albert Einstein almost exactly 101 years ago. He actually said there was something called gravitational waves, and he wasn't even sure if they're real or not, but he said that they're very likely to exist, but we may not be able to ever see them because there would not be actually very prominent. And so what this infers is that, so in space, in space time specifically, uh, once in a while you'll get ripples, ripples of gravity and time and everything and these ripples um, are usually the effect of um, either two black holes colliding or uh, neutron stars colliding or something that is very, very, very uh, dramatic and massive that happens on the uh, space scale, on the um, astronomical scale, and then causes these gravitational uh, ripples. And he said that uh, these ripples were sort of the effect of his um, special theory and, and general theory of relativity, uh, specifically actually general relativity. And this was one of the last, if not the last prediction that he made that was still not officially proven and we have now officially proven all of his theories and so now that also means that Einstein was 100% correct in his predictions. Anyway, so before we talk more about this, let's actually uh, escape our, un uh, our galaxy for a second uh, into the outer universe because I wanted to show you what has been detected. So last year, um, sometime, I think it was August of 2015, just when this uh, LIGO apparatus, which is actually a very big machine consisting of um, these detectors that are over three miles long, uh, and there's actually two of them in the US, uh, as soon as it was turned on, almost exactly uh, within like this, you know, 24 hour period, uh, the scientists detected um, an anomaly, or not really an anomaly, but what they were actually looking for. And this uh, this was a collision of two black holes uh, approximately a billion light years away from us. So what I'm going to do right now is show you the scale that we're talking about here. And this is, of course, a billion year, uh, years ago as well. So this is a noise that we've detected that is very, very old and very, very far away from us. So literally a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And uh, we're still not there. We're only about a third way there. So this is where... Um, so I'm just going to give you a, an idea of a distance we're talking about here. So right about uh, somewhere around here. So th somewhere on this, somewhere in this region, this is exactly a billion light years away from us. Uh, in one of these other galaxies, there was a collision of two black holes. So let's just like pick a random galaxy here and go to object. And somewhere inside, if we actually fly inside this galaxy, and then go inside, right in the middle, and then go into the search here, not this search, other search, and now look for um, a black hole within 100 light years of us. And just to look at, there's a binary black hole possibly, black hole binary, there we go. So it was a, a binary black hole, 
where two black holes, uh, as they basically um, orbit around each other, they approach each other and at some point they collide. So I don't think this is actually a binary black hole. I think this is possibly... Oh boy, this is a big system. Um, not exactly what I was looking for. I was just looking for... Yeah, this is a, a black hole and I believe... Um, is this uh, what I think it is? I think it's a brown dwarf. Yep, it's a brown dwarf. Let's see if, if we can actually... No, we, uh, we unfortunately we can't really find a black hole in this environment. It's, it's a little bit too small. But we can definitely find this one. This is going to be a little bit easier. This is a singular black hole. And basically, yeah, so in this particular... Um, space and time so there were two black holes orbiting around each other now i'm gonna um, demonstrate this in universe sandbox 2 in a few, few minutes and be, and uh, as they basically approach each other, each other closer and closer at some point they start orbiting each other so fast um and we're talking about several times per second and uh, this is something I'm going to help you visualize with the Universe Sandbox. And um, then they collide. And this is when the noise stops. And the noise we're talking about here is, of course, the um, gravitational ripple. So every time they orbit, they create a ripple. The more they orbit, the more ripples they create. And if they create several ripples per second, this is something that we can actually then convert to sound. And this is actually the sound that... Uh, is technically uh, audible to us. We can actually hear it in um, audio waves because uh, this sound is something that is representative of these gravitational waves, but in something that we, we can actually understand. Anyway, so let's uh, go into Universe Sandbox and I'm going to show you more ab uh, and explain more about this. And here we go. So we have two black holes orbiting around each other relatively fast. This is actually real time, uh, one second per second. And uh, the two black holes that we um, detected, or I guess they detected, uh, they were 36 times mass of sun and 29 times mass of sun. So they were relatively similar in size to each other. And uh, basically they were, they were orbiting around uh, one another and creating these ripples that unfortunately we're, you know, it's going to be really almost impossible to simulate them. But this is what the picture of all of this looks like if you were to actually look at it. And with time, these black holes would actually move closer and closer to one another. So we're going to actually simulate that as, as well by, uh, well, let's actually just decrease their total velocity until they start moving toward each other a little bit more. So there we go. They're a little bit closer now. And, uh, and they're basically creating a one ripple every time they pass by. So one ripple and two ripple. And so th these ripples would accelerate the closer they get to each other. So if I were to change this to 5,000 now, and this is going to be, let's just say, 7,000, they would now approach even closer and... There you go. They're orbiting a lot faster now and creating even more ripples. And basically, with time, uh, they would approach so close to each other that um, they would essentially collide into one another. And so, um, and right before the collision, and I'm, I'm going to have to decelerate this even more because they're just going crazy here. This is actually slow motion now. And so, with time, uh, at some point, they will actually um, combine into one. And there we go. So this is almost the collision. You can kind of see them exploding. And uh, basically, at this moment, this is when the sound stops. And by sound, I mean the uh, actual ripples. The ripples stop. And uh, this becomes one massive black hole. So the, the black hole that this created was approximately um, 62 times uh, masses of sun, meaning that... Uh, three masses of sun was the energy released from this collision. So the actual energy released at the end when the black holes actually finally combined into one another uh, was so massive that it was actually uh, equivalent to three masses of sun in terms of energy. It's actually a huge amount of energy. And um, this is essentially another Einstein's um, for, uh, famous uh, formula, E equals mc squared. So energy here was... Um, three masses of sun multiplied by speed of light to the power of two. And if you ever do the math behind it, you'll you'll realize how how ridiculously high the energy was. All right, they're still kind of orbiting around on one another, so I'm gonna try to finally combine them. Let's actually decrease the speed until they finally come into one. Oh, they just don't want to do that. 
And what I just realized right before they actually combine into one, uh, I think the bigger black hole actually managed to absorb a lot of the mass from the smaller black hole because the smaller black hole was much, much smaller than before, which is actually pretty interesting. And I'm not sure if this is how exactly it happened, probably not, but it's interesting how this game is actually able to recreate this. Now, like I mentioned before, so it lost three masses of sun, so technically there should be 62 and the uh, other masses of sun were released as pure energy. And what you're observing here, uh, the actual little uh, yellow fragments, that's basically the explosions from extra mass that collided with this black hole. It would not be like this at all. This is actually not very realistic, but it does create this really cool effect. It kind of almost looks like an eye if you, if you look at it from a certain angle. And there you go. This is our black hole eye. This is probably going to be the screenshot for this particular video. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, what this allows us to do, to do now is not only to use telescopes to see things, but to actually literally hear things. We finally discovered the astronomical ears to be here uh, to be able to hear all of these collisions, all of these really, really cool astronomical um, events that were otherwise invisible to us. And specifically, this will also allow us to finally study gravity in more detail and will very likely explain a lot about gravity that we didn't really know before. And of course, this also might one day lead us to, uh, you know, discovering things like anti-gravity or possible anti-gravity drive. So there's a lot of uh, potentials and possibilities that will actually stem from this amazing discovery of the collision of these two black holes. And I think one of the more important reasons behind this discovery is, of course, the fact that we are now actually able to uh, detect these ripples. Uh, before these ripples were kind of invisible to us, we, we would never be able to even see them because basically space-time, even though we're in it, is impossible to actually feel and detect. Uh, when the space stretches, you don't really feel it. But uh, this LIGO machine thing, Majigi, uh, along with the fact that we now have a very a specific technique to to measure um, ripples of space and time will allow us to actually uh, literally feel the space. We can now hear it, we can hear it stretch, we can detect things that were invisible to us. And since uh, scientists have been actually looking for this for over 40 years now, I think it's a, it's probably one of the biggest discoveries of, uh, I would say, this century, but the century is still young, so possibly the last few decades. Uh, definitely one of the bigger discoveries. Now, uh, so this is what I wanted to show you, wanted, uh, what I wanted to explain, and um, I also wanted to actually let you hear the sound that the collision of these two black holes created, so this is actually the sound itself. And of course, this is the inter reinterpretation and reimagining of the uh, gravitational ripples in terms of sound. And I think before we finish this video, let's actually possibly add a few more black holes in here and create some more ripples and more explosions of black hole proportions. We're just going to put them as still and they'll start colliding into the main black hole here, hopefully, or not, or maybe they'll just fly away. But every time uh, the black hole um, or any kind of a massive body, including neutron stars. Oh no, my black hole disappeared. I don't know what just happened, but it's gone now. Uh, every time the a massive body like a, a black hole or neutron star actually uh, comes close to one another, or like, for example, right here, we have two of them orbiting around each other, they will be creating these ripples that can then be detected with this uh, uh, new technique that we now have. Actually, it's not, a, it's not a new technique, but it's a technique that has finally been proven to actually work. And there's uh, a lot of new laboratories around the world that started to actually create their own machines now, but because they're so expensive and so large, it might be a while before other labs are able to actually uh, detect uh, gravitational waves as well. Anyway, I hope this video was kind of clear and I hope I helped you visualize this important discovery that you've probably heard about on the news or possibly read on the internet. And this was the discovery from February uh, 11th, 2016 and will very likely change our understanding of the universe. Anywho, thank you so much for watching. And if, you, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe because there's more science, space and math videos coming in the future. Also, don't forget to share this video, don't forget to like it, and show it to someone that you think may enjoy learning more about space, the universe, and everything else. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video, game you later guys, and as always, bye bye.